and this is a question as a student of psychology, but a question more so with the reality. You, what do you think about parents keeping their child in for this long, length period of time? I mean, what what can they do? Is it healthy? You know, what do we do? It's. I don't think it's particularly healthy, especially for us. I mean, it's the springtime. We need that vitamin D from the sun, uh, the fresh air we need it. A lot of our children are living in poverty where the homes have issues of lead, uh, not enough uh, oxygen circulation. Uh, there can be all types of uh, chemicals and chemical leaks in the home that could be making them sick. Um, I've seen articles that discuss how the home can be more unsafe than the outside in the community. You know, so it's not healthy from an oxygen standpoint, from a sunlight standpoint. It's not healthy. As African people, we are a people of nature. We have to be out in the air with trees to fill the spirit. That's who we are. So it's not totally healthy. Um, at the same time, it's not going to lead to a premature death either. So it's just a a a, a, a stage we will have to get through. Um, you know, some parents, what they'll do is they'll just open the windows and make sure they get some fresh air in there, you know, every day. Um, so to speak, you know, let the children go out in the backyard for a little bit of time, you know, not being in contact with anyone else or anything like that, keeping that social distancing from people who may be walking through the neighborhoods or what have you. So there's little things that you can do. Uh, some people even have little patios in the home, you know, where the children could go out on the patio, which is like on the second, third floor. They can't come in contact with anyone else, but yet they're out the house. You know, so there are some smart things that you can do. But here's one thing I, I, I want to say about the academic program, because depression is a big issue with black women. It's a big issue with black men. Depression erodes our motivation to do something about it, which is why, for me, depression is probably the most dangerous mental illness you can have, because it is the one mental illness that literally erodes your self-belief to do something about it. So for parents who are listening and they say, listen, I don't have the motivation to do no 30 minutes of math, no 30 minutes of language, no 30 minutes of writing, no 30 minutes of black history. Okay. From a psychological standpoint, we meet people where they are. Whatever assignments we give to our clients, our patients must match their motivation and energy level. So if a parent says, Dr. Umar, I'm not really motivated to implement your system fully, no problem. Just start making the children read. If, if, if a parent came to me post-corona and said, listen, Doc, I wasn't able to implement the whole thing. I just didn't have the motivation. I didn't have a laptop. You know, I, I wasn't able to get all that. We don't have any books in our house, you know. But I did make my children read for two hours or three hours every day. If a parent can tell me that they made their child read for two or three hours every day for the entire 30 days, as far as I'm concerned, that was a success story. Because when we read, Brother Mike, four things happen automatically when you read. Number one, the child's brain or our brain, anyone's brain, will automatically pick up new vocabulary. It will automatically improve your knowledge of general facts and information. It will automatically improve your speaking skill, and it will automatically improve your writing skill. So just by making sure your child reads for two hours a day, 120 minutes a day, you're improving vocab. You're improving general knowledge, you're improving writing, and you're improving speaking. So even if they don't do it all, just making sure that children read, for me, is a good enough program for a parent to implement at this time. Got it. If I may take a moment to, since, uh, you know, we those of us who study religion, if you remember, Ikra was the first command um, if I remember right, it was Ikra Bisme Rabil Lazi Kalak, which means reading the name of the Lord who taught man uh, what man knew not, taught man from the pen what man knew not. And so the first command that Allah or God gave people was to read. And so in that, you know, a lot of us have that deficiency as parents uh, and also as children. <clears throat> people ask me to this day, Brother, how'd you get your vocabulary? I don't think I have a big vocabulary, but I said I read. And then in, in, in the nation of Islam, if we don't understand a word, we have a dictionary that we look it up till we get an understanding. And if we don't understand it still, we get a thesaurus. And we understand it completely, then we go on to the next word. That's how you build a vocabulary, brothers and sisters. There's no trick to it. So thank you for that, Dr. Umar. Yes, sir. And the other thing, too, Brother Mike, this is why I have always, 
encouraged parents to build a library in your home. It doesn't have to be exhaustive, but every home should have a whiteboard or a chalkboard. Every home should have a dictionary, a thesaurus, and a complete set of encyclopedia. Every home should have a set of books that encompasses the reading level of everyone in that home. See, had we been doing what we should have been doing all along, this emergency shut-in would have not impacted our parents as significantly as it has. The reason some of us are hurting from this is because we were not already on the job. If you had a library, if you already had your dictionary, you had paper, you had your pens, your calculators, you had your printer, then you were already set because you should have been doing this anyway because I always preach that every parent is a homeschooling parent anyway. Even if your child goes to public charter private parochial school, that you cannot depend on that school to teach your child everything that they need to know in those right. seven hours a day that they get your child. Right. You have to homeschool right. them anyway. So, again, this whole corona piece is really just a wake-up call to black America that we need to get serious about our situation. Indeed, indeed. Well said, well said, Dr. Umar. With you. Well, let me ask you the question first, and then you can take it from there. Um, if someone wants to have you as their psychologist, whether it be for their child or themselves, if they know someone, are you available for them to hire you? Uh, yeah, if they need me uh, to consult with them um, on their home school program, if they need a life coaching session um, until I get my license, uh, I'm not legally allowed to call what I do therapy, so I call it life coaching. But if there's anyone out there who's dealing with depression, you know, they're locked in with the children all day. They just need somebody to talk to. Uh, people don't know what direction to take their life in, hopelessness, low self-esteem, relationship issues, parent-child issues, anything like that. I do offer life coaching uh, for that. Also consultations. You know, your child is autistic or if they're uh, truly intellectually disabled. And when school comes back in the session, you would have a plan for how you want to engage the school system to get your child what it is that they need to be successful. And so any consultations or coaching that anybody in the community needs from me, they can email me to schedule that, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com. They can also email me through the website, Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com. That's D R U M A R. I repeat, D R U M A R J O H N S O N at yahoo.com. They can also call my 800 number, which is 844 4 Dr. Umar. That's 844 4 D R U M A R. They can text message me on my personal cell. Uh, and again, on a personal cell, I only want text messages. I don't want voicemail. And that's 215 989 9858. Again, 215 989 9858. But I'm also shut in as is everyone else, so I have more time than usual for consultations, more time than usual for life coaching sessions, uh, more time than usual to give out advice and, and support parents who are at, at home trying to educate their children. But I'm just hoping that when everyone gets their coronavirus stimulus check that they remember the FDMG Academy. Please make those oh. donations. On your on. cash app, dollar sign, FDMG School. If you don't have the cash app, the full link is cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG School. I repeat, cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG School or mail them in P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. Um, those are the two ways to donate. Also, I can't wait to get back on the road with the Black Parent Know Your School Rights Boot Camps. We were doing so well with that when this situation erupted, but we're definitely going to get back to that. Those states that we get, that we didn't get to will be getting rescheduled, and I can't wait to get this book done because at one of those trainings, it will be the actual first release for the Black Parent Advocate book. Folks will be able to order it as well on my website, drumarjohnson.com, but the actual physical release at a public event will be at one of these Black Parent trainings. I'm hoping it's either the Pittsburgh 
training on June the 6th or the Minnesota training on June the 27th. 